Hey, it's Santa from Full Access UTV. Well, I'm growing my, uh, my Santa Claus outfit anyways. But uh, today I wanted to talk about something I get a lot of phone calls about every single week. You know, thanks to subscribers and everybody viewing, people call me and say, I bought a KRX from your videos. I mean, they're self-explanatory, apples to apples, oranges to oranges. I bought a KRX from every video. So what do I need to do to make it better? What do I need to do to upgrade it? That is the number one question I get and it happens all week long. And so I keep saying, I gotta do a video about it. Today's that video. There are basically six and a half things you need to do to your KRX. Then you could go beat the crap out of it. That's it. I mean, six and a half things. Um, so basically I'm gonna talk to you about some of the other things you should, you should do. If you bought a 2020 KRX, the first thing you should do is check your knuckles. Um, Kawasaki was warranting out and upgrading the knuckles and the arms on the KRXs to a newer, better style. Um, as far as I know, it's still completely free. They're taking care of it, but you don't know if you bought it used, if uh, the guy did that or not. So take a look at the photo that we're going to post up and then, uh, you know, make your determination if you need to get the knuckles done. The other um, thing to talk about too is fuel gauges. A lot of people talk about, well, the fuel gas gauge doesn't read right and blah, blah, blah. I think Kawasaki did that to eliminate it, starving for fuel, but we do have another video um, that you can look up and it's our fuel filter and the, um, the fuel level gauge repair. So I would definitely say if you want to do that to get a more accurate gas gauge, you can do that. But um, other than that, it's a pretty simple video and stuff. So that will bring me right into the six things you need to do. Um, number one, get a rollover valve, guys. It's a simple little device pressurized ball in there and we sell them we got them on the website these things have a problem just like Polaris's and everybody else people heard of Polaris's catching fire and other things one of the reasons is is they build so much pressure in that tank that they're blowing the cap assemblies out and they're even blowing the breather assemblies out of the tank shooting fuel everywhere catching on fire you guys have the exact same problem here but um, it seems the KRX tank is built better so what's happening is your, your fuel is starting to boil over. You're getting tons of pressure. If you open your gas cap and you feel that it blowing out, all that stuff is for emissions. So if it's me, I've never seen in my over 20 years of desert racing, rock crawling or anything, a pressurized fuel system. It's done for one reason, that's emissions um, and emissions only. Basically, they're trapping the fuel vapor and then it's the canister purge valve is going to allow it to go through charcoal to let it breathe and this and that. It's unsafe for off-road. Um, it's a government regulated thing. This little valve, 10 minutes to put it in. It's behind the passenger seat, uh, behind the little box. We even got the pictures on our site and the product link that shows you which way to put it. It is a 10 minute install. Do it. Um, I mean, it, it causes so many issues too. Another one, fuel starvation. These things have so much pressure that they're starving on fuel and they're melting down motors because of it. Um, another thing is multiple people will tell you and you get online and probably even read it here on YouTube today. People have had starvation problems where they can't start their car after 30 minutes of running and so on and so forth. Open the gas cap, let it breathe for 10 minutes, starts right up. It's the pressure. Get rid of it. That's the rollover valve. That's your first thing. Number two, seatbelt bypass plug. Real simple thing. Driver's side seatbelt, if you follow it down underneath the plastics, right at the very bottom, is a plastic clip that is your electrical connector for your seatbelt. What it is, is when you plug in your seatbelt, it tells the car you're in the seat and it will allow it to build speed and RPMs. If you don't click it in, then you get something like a whopping 10 miles per hour. Don't quote me on the exact, I think everybody's a little bit different, but it's basically a low power limp mode and you have no power. Unfortunately, that assembly in there, whether it be in warranty or not, if it fails, you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere, guys, and you are limping home. And hopefully, you know, I've had people calling me, tell me one guy said he was about six miles out in the, in the weather and he could not get it up a hill and he had to walk home. Uh, that's horrible. Why? Because he didn't have a seatbelt bypass. Um, it, there's multiple stories of people being 40 miles out and having to drive home at 10 miles per hour, blah, blah, blah. This is simple insurance to not let that happen to you. Now you don't have to put it in right now. If you want that safety, you got kids, whatever. Hey, cool. That's fine. But at least throw it in your glove box. Just have it. So if that failure happens, you do have it. Um, what else? Uh, one of the biggest is 
you got some failure points on the Kawasaki that they missed it a little bit in the diameter of the metal. Um, we're going to post up some pictures right now and basically the shocks, they rip through the hood. Um, and, and as you can see from those photos, it, it's not a good thing. And a lot of people go, well, I don't really think I need that because we're not abusing them like you guys. Yeah, either were those people. It's a simple thing. It's the quality of the metal that was used that day and they are tearing apart. And as I've said in another video, and you can watch that, the shock, about, shock brace, how to install it, they don't rip out and come through the roof. They rip out coming down. So if you get in the air, you're flexing out, you're jumping or anything, and when you land, you have no suspension because the shock came right through your hood and blew your hood off. Um, simple insurance, 59 bucks, and now becoming more prevalent, the rear braces. So we also have the rear shock mount braces, exactly the same thing. Um, it's, do those, you know, absolute must do. Same thing with the diameter metal, the A-arm braces in the front. You can see them, we got them on the table here. They're extremely hard to see in the car, but we got a lower and upper A-arm braces. And what these do is they tie your A-arms on the passenger side and the driver's side together on the top and the bottom. Keeps them a lot stronger and you can't rip them off. So again, we're gonna post up some pictures right now. And I mean, we have tons of photos of these things and I just stopped collecting them, but um, it's a notorious problem. And not only is it a problem, your machine's totaled because of it. Not only that, you're, you're physically hurt or even worse. Um, you know, when you think about all the time we put into these, I put a ton of time into mine. I've, I probably got 80 hours into one of them. And uh, I don't wanna lose that to something dumb like that. So it's extra insurance and, an, and basically a great way to do it. Um, the other thing, the last thing on the list. So basically, I think that was correct, right? Ball valve one, seatbelt bypass two, shock mount braces three, air and braces four. Nope, I was wrong. Fuel filters. This has not been one that has been top of my list. Um, by the way, you'll catch in the link for this ad, uh, our link to our website. I've had that info up there for well over a year and it's about, you know, what you need to know about your KRX and what you should do. The fuel filters is something you should do. Uh, watch our video online. It shows you um, how to change out your fuel filter and how to fix that fuel gauge. It's a real simple job. It's another thing that can, done, can be done in 10 to 15 minutes and it's located underneath your passenger seat. It's real simple. Um, well, I was just reading something too where um, I was mentioned as a competitor having the wrong fuel filters and all these other things. Hey, you know what, at the, at the end of the day, the people who know and know KRXs are, are saying the same thing I am. Kawasaki knows this and new parts are coming. The stock fuel filters are too restrictive. So restrictive in fact, that even in decent condition, when you're running this car in a dyno, they're watching them starve for fuel. They're realizing that the fuel sock is the problem. So they're upgrading the filters and these are the filters to go to and they're not getting that fuel starvation problem. So, or, so no matter what the naysayers say, change the fuel filter guys. I mean, and we're giving you two. So we recommend every six months, unless you know you got bad gas, whatever, but they're cheap, inexpensive insurance. Um, and then last and not least is we're, everyone's seeing it and hearing it. You're seeing pictures are all over the forums and uh, Facebook and everything else. The transmission's breaking in these because people are hitting the rear skid and there's not enough gap between that skid and that transmission. It's um, very minor, 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths, depending on if your, you know, your mounts are worn and so on and so forth. So we have our upgraded skid kit. This thing is fully bolt on. You got to drill a couple holes and it goes over. You'll have your, your factory skid, which is, you know, a beer can. And then you'll have our skid. And then if you have a Delrin, your Delrin to go underneath. So that's basically our skid kit. And I mean, those are the must do's. So one of the other things I want to cover too in this video is a lot of people call me and say, well, I already have the plastic skid plate. I don't need that. You're absolutely wrong. The reason that we even came out with that was because we had the plastic skid plate and the transmission broke. The local dealer has all these down here and the transmission broke. The number one seller that the local Kawasaki dealer buys is our skid plates. Why? Because they know their customers should have that. So if you think because you got the Kawasaki, the Tusk, uh, Super ATV or any other skid that you do not need that, you are sorely mistaken. And I'm going to show you. So this is, this is 3 8 Delrin. Um, and basically it's the exact same th stuff in a Tusk kit or even a Kawasaki. And so what you're saying is this is going to support the weight of your vehicle from crushing in and hitting your transmission this far above. 
well, this is just me. This is just me doing it. This isn't a 2,000 pound rig and you can see it bend and bow. This stuff, it, I mean, you think about the weight of your rig sitting on a rock or anything else, it's gonna break your transmission. It happens all the time. Um, we even had, uh, oh God, what's his name? Jeff, I think Jeff came in here. He like 40 miles on his machine, something like that. He had smashes and marks. He doesn't do rocks, he doesn't do anything like that. It's just simply cresting a hill and coming down suspension bottoms a little bit. That's all it takes, guys. So it's just one of those things, but don't trust the plastic. You know why? It's plastic. This is half inch. And as you can see, it's plastic, it's bending, it's bowing. And I'm, it's just me. I'm just putting a little bit of weight on that. That is not the weight of your machine pushing up on your skid plate. So I'm not even gonna try to bend our skid plate in front of you guys, because you all know I can't bend eighth inch steel. I'm not Superman, I'm freaking Santa Claus. So you know what I mean? But any, anything other than that, I think that's it. I mean, the other one I tell everybody is, hey, do a cab seal kit, that's your half, right? So I got six and a half, the half is a cab seal kit. I almost think it's required, mandatory, should have been put in the machine, buy it, just put it in there. I mean, we got them on the site, we sell them. Um, they just had a price increase on them, on us to us, on them to us again, and we make nothing on them, but who cares? I mean, it, if you're gonna be happy in your machine, you can't be swirling in the dirt all day, so a cab seal kit is a must do too, but that's it. You know, I mean, you watch the video, um, now you can watch the other videos if you're interested in buying the products and you'll see how to put them in and you'll hear more about them, but uh, that's pretty much it. If you bought a KRX, now make it yours. Um, we make a ton of products that, that are custom products, but, and, and you know, to alphabet it for yourself, but if you wanna just know that you got a good machine and go out and beat it up and keep up with everybody, that's it, man, it's, there's a table right there. It's a, it's a horrible business plan, but hey, that's what you need, you know what I mean? Um, other than that, we got a ton of stuff for the KRXs. We got custom grills, we got mirror kits, we got dash kits, uh, neoprenes for the doors, cup holders for the passenger side, um, got steering wheel kits, shifters, gate shifters. There are so many different accessories that we make that you can do to outfit it and make it yours. It's awesome. but. Um, that's it, guys. Happy KRXing, and I uh, hope everybody has a real Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and thanks for watching. Please click that like and subscribe button. Santa would appreciate it. Thanks.